Welcome to the Art Studio Insights Podcast, where we demystify the creative process and exchange ideas with career-minded artists. We are your hosts, Adriana Ame and Jackie Sanders. We are two emerging artists sharing for the advice and business lessons we have learned along our journey. So if you're not already, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you'll be notified when we drop a new episode every Tuesday. On this week's episode, we are going to be discussing making art while on vacation. But before we do that, let's just kind of talk about our week a little bit um, yeah. before we dive in. <laughs> Super exciting. I've been working, I mean, color. I'm just going to talk about color first, right? <laughs> color. The color queen is speaking. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but <laughs> in my eyes, you're like the color queen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will say color is definitely inseparable from my process. It's one of my favorite parts of the artistic process, color swatching, color mixing, testing out paints of different, you know, brands, types, etc. I mean, it's just, I mean, we're inseparable, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I'm finally preparing to teach an in-person color mixing class. And part of it is I don't want this, oh, here's color theory and the wheel and boring, et cetera, et cetera. (laughs) This is going to be not your long drawn theory bits. Instead, this is going to be presented like practical information, tips and tricks so that you can apply it to your creative practice, learn to mix color intuitively. Um, so it's just fun, literally just fun. Right. But without, yeah, without being, without being too much in the weeks, it's just going to yeah. literally be about, about the fun bits of it. Um, and, yeah, some and I'm necessary so, parts too. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I'm so excited. I will definitely be signing up for that class because <laughs> I mean, I did go to art school. I did the whole academia and it was a super helpful process for me. But the course that you've been telling me about, like as you've been developing it and hearing even like bits and pieces of it, it sounds super awesome because you're right. Like it is more practical. These are skills that people can then come learn, experiment with as you're learning and then directly apply them once you get back to your studio versus other things like theory and like the color wheel it's almost like an application of those ideas in a class exactly exactly rather so than like here's of... a textbook and here's a worksheet and like learning the whole history behind it which also has a role and is important but you actually get a learn by doing which I feel like a lot yeah. of people learn more effectively that way yeah and and you get nice takeaways um or nice pieces out of it that you can reference later so it's not just yeah I'll sit here and do nothing no like you're you're actually gonna <laughs> get your hands dirty with some paint like this is gonna be amazing so I'm really looking forward to it um I'm doing in person first and getting feedback from my first set of students um you know to kind of refine the structure of the yeah. class but eventually the longer term plan and obviously we'll discuss all this in a future episode or episodes is to <laughs> take this in person class and eventually transform it into an online class so that it's available to more folks not just people in our area so more to come on that but yeah, how about you Jackie? where where can well first of all where can people find information on that color mixing class if they hear this episode and like want to learn more about it, would the, your newsletter sign up be the best place? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely going to be the okay. first place. It's going to be the newsletter sign up as well as uh, there will be information on my website. There is a tab for artists and there is a workshops page. So there will definitely be more information there. Um, once the class is, is, uh, is ready for okay, uh, awesome. being available online. Good. I just want to make sure everyone knew that because yeah, I feel like classes like that, especially in-person workshops, I always leave them like so fired up with inspiration. Just like, (laughs) I just want to make so much work. And (laughs) that kind of ties into a big project that I've been thinking about this week. um, That is one we're both involved in, but I wanted to share with all of our (laughs) listeners because it kind of is a funny way of how this came about. So in light of everything starting to open back up again, it's summer, it's warm, people are getting outside. And I've really been in that mindset of just looking for more opportunities or like what is possible, really getting in that dream future thinking mindset. And so I was scrolling Facebook one day, which I try to limit my time doing. 
<laughs> and I believe it was in like some Raleigh artist group or creatives of the triangle group. I'm not sure which Facebook group specifically, so don't quote me on it, but I saw a post about this thing called the Garner Art Around Town Mural Project. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is. I used to live in Garner. I live in Raleigh now, but I was like, this sounds like a cool idea. And it has always been on my dream board within the next one to three years of helping with a mural or doing murals myself. <laughs> yeah, just because it seems so cool having an outdoor display. People can come and interact with it, take pictures with it. So I always thought that would be so cool, but I don't have a lot of experience with it. So it can be super intimidating. Um, and so I basically immediately saw the post, emailed the people in charge. They have like an online seminar where they were going to discuss details. Which is and, really cool. Right. Which is so awesome. And so now this week, well, I guess a week prior to this uh, episode airing, but we will have picked up our boards for it. So it's basically going to be a few dozen artists. Everyone gets three, a three foot by four foot panel that you then get to paint on and create any type of imagery that you want. And they're going to be hung up around downtown Garner. Um, and so it's almost like a temporary mural installation rather than being like a permanent mural on a wall, which for me is almost that perfect segue of getting into the mural mindset because, okay, this is going to be on display outside. It's large enough that people can still like take photos with it, interact with it, but you almost have the safety of creating it in your own studio space. So it's not like painting on site, which that alone is intimidating, like having people watch you paint. <laughs> and like I've assisted on a mural when I was in college, which is this huge, like, I don't even know, like two story high, huge hallway mural, which was so fun. But again, I was just an assistant, just learning. Um, and so doing it on your own, leading the charge is a completely different thing. So I'm super excited for this project. Um, we're picking up our boards this month and then Later in the summer, they'll be on display basically through the end of the fall and then auctioned off. Um, so part of the proceeds will go to the artists. Part of it will go to um, the Garner Arts Fund. And so I'm super excited. I think it will be a cool way. Yeah, just like a new opportunity, being a beginner again in a process, which listeners may know now, like I absolutely love. I love being out of my element. Um, and yeah, just getting fired up with a new creative process. So that's mainly been on my brain this week. Um, yeah. So definitely more to come on classes, more to come on how we progress with this uh, mural-ish project. Yeah. <laughs> we can call it like that. Um, so we'll definitely be posting more of that on our social media and our respective websites. Um, mm -hmm. So without further ado, uh, we hope you enjoy the episode we recorded on um, this topic of making art while on vacation. As always, let us know what you think, if you have any suggestions, um, and we'll catch you on the next episode. All right, here we go. Enjoy. How was your vacation? It was amazing. I uh, spent a week over in the Keys. It was <sighs> first time it was nice and warm. i'm so jealous oh my goodness it's been so cold here i am i'm over it i'm ready for summer that's okay uh <laughs> it was not all fun and games however i will say that uh part of the reason i was there was to do rescue diver training with patty so cool i know and then so get cool. like cpr trained and all that kind of fun stuff but the training was really rough i had to carry a guy a set of stairs several times so rescue again, diver like water scuba Yes, exactly. The whole equipment, the whole shebang. Yep. So basically, um, we had to run scenarios like what if you found someone unconscious underwater, how oh, to bring right. them up to the surface, drag them to the land and give them CPR and all that kind of fun stuff. So oh my it's a good to know. Um, Hopefully never have to use. Uh, correct. Um, <laughs> yeah. So now that I'm certified with that, thankfully, but... It did come with some challenges in terms of my art making practice. I am I, I am a firm believer in if at all humanly possible, 
everybody should have at least 10 minutes per day to yeah. work on their craft. And I just remember we were both in the studio because obviously we have studios down the hall from each other and you were like prepping for vacation. And you were like packing bags, getting all these like panels and paints ready. And I was just like, what are you doing? Aren't you leaving soon? And you're like, yeah, I'm packing. And I thought you were just a crazy person because I do not do that. I'm like, peace out. I am disconnecting. And you were here packing up more stuff than I'd probably touch in like two weeks. So what all did you take with you? Because I am genuinely curious. So when it comes to that, you could say I'm more of a maximist than a minimalist. Um, the way I see it is, and it all depends. Let's just throw this out there first. It all depends on how much space you have. Like I was going to be on an airplane <laughs> with limited, you know, luggage space. I wasn't going to do a check. You're like, luggage. all right, I'm checking four extra suitcases for like a hundred dollars each just for panels. Yeah, that's going to be a <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, so what I ended up doing was I just had a tote bag and I told myself, you know, if it doesn't fit in the tote bag, it's not going. Well, that's um, good. It's like some restrictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I know I could technically could have gotten away with just a, a maybe just like a, sketchbook? a journal, yeah, yeah. like a, a journal, sketchbook, and a few pens, and that's about it. But honestly, I would rather have more and not necessarily use all of it. Um, the way I work, I work very intuitively for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so I part of my process is to make a mess before I define. Or the painting tells me what it what wants the end to be. product is going to be exactly. So you want so, like all of the materials at your fingertips, just at, in case. At least the some of them. Um, so, like for example, I am a heavy gesso user for my texture. I use a lot of gesso, so I yeah. just pack a really tiny tub of gesso. <laughs> it's really small. <laughs> You're right like now. I can't even do anything with this. Almost, almost right now, but um, I took a little bit of matte medium with me, and I took some paints. So I just picked some favorite colors. Okay. I didn't take everything. I just knew I do a lot of color mixing. We can talk about that. It's a different oh, topic, man, different yeah. <laughs> um, but I do a lot of color mixing, so I already knew, okay. The core I can, colors. Yeah, I can do core colors, plus I yeah. took a few fun colors I don't usually use. Um, so being away from <laughs> the studio and the normal colors I use in yeah. my normal work and having new colors to deal with, it was like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this stuff? <laughs> Um, it's so funny because even just hearing you talk about that, it reminds me of when I just pack normal clothes for vacation. <laughs> it's like you have your staple things, you know, okay, I'm definitely wearing these jeans. I wear this t-shirt every day at home anyway. And then you have kind of like the spicier ones. I'm like, maybe if the moment strikes, I'm going to want to wear this top. <laughs> I've never used, I've never worn it for the past three months, but maybe this Saturday I'm going to want to wear it. And that's, this one that time. makes me rem like, reminds me of you talking about the paint, like colors that you don't normally use. You're like, yeah, but I might be inclined to use it. Well, so I have to exactly take it. what happened. And in yeah. my case, I, I'm, I'm very challenge oriented. Um, if y'all don't know about you, Will. Um, and I don't back down. Push your limits. Very often. Yeah. Yes. So in my mind, I was like, I'm taking all these colors and I'm using all these colors, even the ones that I usually would never, ever, ever use, but yeah. I don't have them. And being out in a different environment, I'm like, well, maybe this will trigger something. So I just kind of challenged myself just to do it. Yeah. And I did. And I got some fun combinations out of it. Cool. Yeah. I'm so excited to go in the studio and see what work you made. Yeah. Do so you think you... Do you think you used everything that you brought or there's something that no, you definitely didn't touch? I actually did not use my sketchbook. Oh, I feel like that'd be like the number one thing that you would No, one use. thing that I did do. Okay. All right. So we, we will have a whole episode of sketchbooks. And <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. For sure. At some point. But essentially the way I see it is sketchbooks can get precious after a while with what you put in it and mm -hmm. you try to curate it and you can't always just be free in them. Sketchbooks so, terrify me. They should have. For that but reason. We have an I know. On that. But one thing I've learned is, so I took with me, now this is a little overkill, but it's okay. <laughs> I took a mixed media pad, like paper pad. Okay. Right? And my idea was like, okay, if I do something cool in these loose pages, yeah. I can always paste them inside the sketchbook what I like. That's like true. I can cut out what I want, put it in, and yeah. what I don't like, well, I like collage or use and recycle in some other way. Right. It doesn't have to go to waste. No hoarding, though. Like, Thin, thin line. 
Um, <laughs> I don't like word stuff. Essentially, I ended up using the sheets, the loose sheets, like okay. tearing them out of the pad, doing all kinds of warm ups whenever I had time. Yeah. And then with the idea of I can cut some of this out and put it inside the sketchbook. Ah. Um, so I never got around to doing that part. Maybe, you know, now that I'm back in the next few days, I'll, I'll kind right. of go through that. But So yeah. what scale was that, though? Just like eight and a half by 11 or? Uh, nine by 12. Okay. Was the size of the paper. So it's nice. And if I need to have something, you know, eight by 10, with yeah. the volume, then I still have a little bit of um, extra to go around. Yeah. So. That's what I ended up doing. It was a lot of fun. I will say, though, you know, part of the challenge when you're on vacation is kind of trying to find that balance. First few days I was there, I wasn't taking the class as soon as I arrived. So I had more time. The scuba class. Yeah, yeah. The scuba class. So I had more time to do some of my usual. I like to do morning, um, if possible, when I wake mm-hmm. up, um, you know, create before you consume. Different topic, different day. Yeah. But some days if I was getting ready to go into my scuba class at 6 a.m. in the morning no you're not yeah it was dark (laughs) and other people were sleeping and and it it was too much um and then by the time I got back it would be evening I would be physically emotionally psychologically tired Mm -hmm. from everything so honestly there were some days where I basically like squeezed out a little bit of paint took out a brush maybe spent 10 minutes Swiped onto some of my existing pieces. That's also why it's nice that they're on paper. You can just lay them out on a right. kitchen counter or even on the floor, depending what kind of space you have. Yeah. Do a few, you know, swipes here and there. Boom, done. Yeah. That's you know, nice. so, some days that's all I had. Other days I had more time to like do things for social media and content. But for the most part, mm-mm. yeah, now, I just I was like, if I only have 10 minutes, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Did you try to discipline yourself in terms of like creating every day or holding yourself to that challenge or no? Yes. Yep. Yes. To me, it's really, really important. Um, I feel like if you create every day, it's almost like um, there's a saying out there where it basically says um, you got to show up consistently. The muse needs to find you working. So yes. whether you feel inspired or not, you got to show up. That's true. So for me, if you don't show up, consistently or you have several days where you don't show up it's easier to make excuses to not show up again it's like going to yeah. the gym for some people <laughs> that's for me uh, yeah I don't know you're, you're great into fitness but for me I'm like if I'm like oh my gosh I'm going to the gym it's this new place and this new program and all this thing as long as I keep it consistent like oh three days a week these are the days I go right the moment I start saying I don't feel like going today and then I do it again and then I do it again before you know it I'm not going and I'm canceling my subscription (laughs) yeah yep that's happened so for me when it comes to art I feel like I I want those ideas to keep flowing. I want it to continue evolving. Right. There is no shortcut to, you know, master your craft. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. So for me, I'm like, if I have the consistent practice, it doesn't matter if I only have 10 minutes or maybe I have four hours or 10 hours. Who knows? Yeah. But (laughs) the discipline part of it is like, it doesn't matter if it's a super busy day. I should be able to set literally 10 minutes aside, take out one tube of paint, squeeze it out, take out a brush, boom, boom, done. Yeah. If that's all I've got, that's all I've got. And I think that's so interesting though, because I haven't taken a trip probably since like late 2019 um, for reasons. So, but the latest trip I took, yeah, I was like just diving into my creative practice again. And so I was still trying to figure out what a routine looked like, honestly, Um, but so we're in North Carolina right now, obviously, and my family is in Maryland. So especially on those trips, I always would struggle with what is my day-to-day routine that I've established in my quote unquote real life look like when I'm traveling to them. And that's not quite a vacation, but it's still being out of your normal scenery. Your routine is like someone else's time, um, and all that stuff. And so it's funny hearing you say that, like keeping that discipline of, the expectations that you have for yourself in your real life, even when you're still on vacation, because I feel like I almost go the complete opposite, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's one of those, like my routine is out the window. I'm normally like very intentional about like my nutrition or what I'm eating. And it's like, 
It's all gone. Yep. It's anyone's bet. Like I go back to my like middle school kid, like junk drawer, give me the chips, give me all the crap. I don't know what happens. And maybe just when I'm visiting my parents' house, it's like, I'm instantly 12 years old again. I don't know. (laughs) But especially from a creative practice, I find that's really hard to keep the discipline, especially with painting and things. I never pack any materials like that. But I would say that I still engage in a creative practice, but so much of mine is either writing based or reading based or a lot of the concepts that I'll use in future work. It's just not physically producing work. So it's kind of related, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. But it's like the way I see it as it relates to discipline, it's like if you wake up in the morning and you always brush your teeth, you can paint. That's I'm not true. saying you give up brushing your teeth, people. <laughs> well, I'm just throwing it out there. Just well, everything like, goes. Example, <laughs> on those days where I had the class that started at Crank of Dawn, literally, like, it was yeah. still dark when we were packing all our stuff. That must have been so pretty, though. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not, like... Not when you're packing your things and it's like, you know, you're barely <laughs> awake and you're like, do I have my fins? Do I have my mask? Do I have my snorkel? Oh, that's like, fair. Mm-mm. Maybe I'm just sensationalizing it because I've literally been in my apartment for over a year. It's that's fine. Okay. It <laughs> it's happens. fine. But like... Everything's fine. <laughs> when that happens, you know, even yes, that is my daily discipline. I also had to adjust to the fact that no, I couldn't do it every morning. Even though I normally do this kind of practice in the morning, there were times that literally there would be a break from one class before we got out to another. So they would say, oh, there's an hour lunch break. I would go back to the apartment we were staying on and paint while I was eating a sandwich. That's so awesome. (laughs) You know, take a bite. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Yeah. Another bite. Swipe, swipe. Skip it. it's basic or like right before going to bed like right. if that's the only time you know I would put the headphones on there were other people you know we had roommates where we were staying yeah other people around they're studying for a test yes <laughs> even in school they yeah. test. <laughs> um sometimes written ones <laughs> so, you know, um, not just in the water but you know there would be studying a study group for the test and I would go to the bedroom put on the headphones mm-hmm. To, again, even if it's just a tube of paint, it was just 10 minutes on a timer. And I'd be like, okay, I'm doing this before I pass out. Yeah. Before the class next, uh, tomorrow. So, um. So what would the things be, do you think, before going on a vacation that you need to prep for? I'd say for me, the biggest thing would be setting those expectations for yourself. I mean, I think having a handful of materials is great, but not necessarily having to bring literally all of your materials and but then also yeah and also gauging those expectations of okay what do I think is realistic for the schedule do you have every day of every second planned or is it more of a luxurious okay just a beach trip you don't even know what time it is you could spend the whole day painting if you wanted those are very different like prep situations they both are. from material and mental too. They are. That's why in terms of what I pack, so I pack several heavy body paints. I've mm-hmm. packed several fluid paints, a few water soluble um, pigment sticks and pencils as well that were water soluble. Right. The paper, gesso, and a few of my favorite tools. So I tried to curate what I was taking with the consideration, okay, there might be a day where I have four hours. Right. And I don't want to just bring in a little sketchbook and a number two pencil right. and be bored after 30 minutes and wishing I had brought things with more color and things like that. Um, right. But you knew you wouldn't have six or eight hours no. for five days in a row. No, absolutely so, not. So it's like, yeah, enough to give you the freedom to explore if you're able to have that time. Exactly. But not feel limited. Exactly. But and also not packing four suitcases worth. No, 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 no. It was literally a tote bag. I was like, if it doesn't fit in the tote bag, it's not going. All right. right. Um, you know, and in terms of like carry on, you know, regulations, right. that tote bag needed to fit underneath the very <laughs> small seat opening in front of me. So it was limited. That's a good forced restriction. It too. is. It is. Because, I mean, yes, I think the hardest part about preparing for it was deciding mm-hmm. what to take honestly it took yeah. me longer than I would even care to admit <laughs> um I'm very 
process and material oriented mm-hmm. in my work. Um, anybody that's seen my studio in person knows <laughs> it looks like an art store. Adria's art store. They have everything. Just I just about. walk down the hall and I'm Literally. like, do you have any extra? Literally Great, other thank artists you. <laughs> in our studio building have come over and say, would you happen to have this medium? And I'm like, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have a three different brands of it. <laughs> Which would you like? Yeah, it's like, you need a pyrrole red? What brand? What consistency? Do you need heavy body? Do you need a fluid? Do you need a high flow? See, that's way above my head. I know, it's like, I, I, I just need red paint. I, I don't I know. know. <laughs> I know. So it's like, for me, I'm like, I'm very passionate about it. And mostly because... To me, I, I experiment with a lot of things to try to find out what I actually like. And mm-hmm. once I find a specific brand, color, et cetera, every brand's different, even if it's the same color. Right. Um, once I found one I like, then that's the one that when I run out, I'll buy more. I don't keep trying others. It's just trying to find my favorites of each thing. Yeah. And then those become kind of like my staple. So that's part of what I was doing with this trip was curating. Okay. I'm going to take some of my very, very ultimate favorites like paint spray. Yeah. I do not live without paint spray. Um, <laughs> so what materials did you decide intentionally not to bring or like that you were tempted to bring, but didn't obviously like scale of canvas. Yeah. Oh, no panels. Do you think if you were in a car, you would have chosen to yes use them yes. yeah yes when i go camping um you know so at home we have an rv it's a, a towing rv um nothing too fancy <laughs> but if we go camping you know or kayaking or whatever mm-hmm. being that that is a vehicle and there is storage in it yeah i do take an easel with yeah. me, a small one <laughs> but i still take an easel i That's do take so funny. canvases that for that one it's not just one tote bag that's okay. about it, it's, a suitcase it's a small suitcase mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. Bad. but usually those trips are also longer number one number two the amount of time spent like free time is, downtime oh yeah. it can be a lot so there can be a day where i'm literally eight days easel plan air style in front of a river Stop. 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 i'm not kidding oh <laughs> national parks are amazing and they're so cheap um it's kind of bad and, you know, I can be with an easel in front of a river right. literally all day long. You know, I go in and out, obviously, got to eat and rest and things. But I can have it set up all day. There I take way more materials because at right. that point I'm trying to carry some of my usual studio practices, but now in an outdoor environment. Um, but, yeah, if I'm traveling on a plane or going I mean, if I'm going to another country or just traveling on a plane, even domestically, it's just one tote bag. Yeah, that's not mm-hmm. too bad then. No, no. Oh, it's cool. just a matter of having enough variety that if the muse strikes and there's something specific you want to do, right? even if it's a limited color palette or limited materials, because you're not bringing the whole studio, um, you still have the tools you need to get it done. Perfect. Yeah. All right, that's the wrap on today's conversation, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Both of our blogs will be linked in the show notes where you can find full episode notes, resources, and links for every podcast episode. If you want to stay connected with us in between episodes and share what you have learned, you can follow us on social media. I'm Ame Art across all platforms. And I'm Jay Sanders Studio across all platforms. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.